Well, hello everyone. Pastor Ian, the Krabby Crafter here, getting ready to do a little Halloween decoupage. So once again, uh, as I like to do, if you've seen any of my other videos, show you the chaos that is my workstation. Uh, and outside the camera frame, it's even worse than that, but that's okay. Uh, so just wanted you guys to know again that when you're working, as, as Tim Holtz likes to say, you do you. And when I do me, I just lay everything out if I even think I'm going to need it. So what we're going to do is just going to clear out and make a little room uh, from everything. So I'm actually going to be working with a wood plaque today. Um, and we were going to, we wanted to show you some techniques for vellum, how to work with vellum. And uh, as, as we get into the painting, you'll see I actually liked what came out so much that I changed the way I was going to work with the vellum. What I'm doing is I'm taking one of these wood frames, and you can get these at Hobby Lobby. Um, and, and you can actually use either side. This side, but on the back side, you have to deal with the, the little hanger. But you can you could take that off if you wanted to, remove that whole block of wood in, in the back. If you wanted to use the back, you could. But I decided on this, we're just going to go ahead and use the front. Um, you just have a, the depth and the recess is about the same. And the reason why I'm using this is because when you're working with vellum, and we're going to use some tiny lights, uh, I wanted to be able to mount those tiny lights and have the vellum raised off of the board and actually wound up again doing a different technique with raising that vellum which we'll show you that uh, we'll explain that as we get into it in the meantime what we're done here is just got the board ready and I went and I'm using I'm actually going to use uh, I could have used the mat I could have used the the media mat but I'm actually using a sheet of pallet paper it's just kind of a waxy paper you can get it Hobby Lobby anywhere and I like to work with it because when I'm done with it I can wad it up and throw away and uh, just wad it up and throw it away so what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to use some different paints uh, I'm just getting my paints out. I've got some Halloweeny colors, if you will, and uh, just an orange uh, and a yellow color. I don't remember what they are, uh, but just got something, just some regular acrylic paint. I don't have any uh, distress paints and didn't really need them for this. So I just grabbed some 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 art craft paint there and used a little orange, a little yellow, and actually we're going to add a little black later. And all we're going to do when we do this is just using a brush. We're just kind of using the crosshatch technique over that white background. Um, and just you know going ahead and go in and uh, just just kind of let the brush leave these strokes uh, and uh, just uh, you know, just kind of feeling it out if you will when you're painting if you ever do anything like this let the brush do the work for you this is a little bit of a smaller brush it's actually a very cheap brush but it's a little bit stiffer bristles which allows me to load up the paint the way I'd like to and then cross hatch it uh, and then just mix in the colors and I'm not actually blending them at this point I'm just going into whatever color I want to I'm not worried about the colors blending together at this point or because uh, I'm going to go back and we're just going to we're going to touch it all up we're going to we're going to cross hatch it we're going to make it blend on the wood and we're going to do a little bit of blending on the palette uh, you'll actually see here in a minute when we get done with this it was a little bright for me I wanted to go with some purple but I didn't have any purple paint I didn't want to waste any of my spray stains or oxides or anything like that on this since this was going to be largely covered up by the collage uh, but I did wind up leaving a good deal of this exposed because I really like the way it came out. You can see those beautiful brush strokes already taken, uh, taking shape there. When it dries, it looks even better. Um, got it speeded up a little bit, so I know you can't quite tell. But all I'm doing is an X stroke, uh, just brushing like I'm brushing X's onto the, the wood there. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, grab a little black now because I wanted to darken it. Like I so said, didn't, we didn't have any purple. So we just want to do that. You can see I'm actually blending that in on the brush. And then we're just drawing some, just putting a little dark shadowing on there. Uh, and you're just going to let the paint do its own thing. Very much of a distressed look. When I was done, I did do it on this one. When you're done, you can go back. You can actually sandpaper over it if you want to. Um, I actually got too much black there, so I'm just going back over that with a little bit of the orange and the yellow. And you just keep doing that. Just keep layering these colors. These are acrylic paints. They're going to layer over each other. They're not going to blend unless you make them blend. So I didn't overwork the paints. I didn't take the two colors and stir them together. I just let them sit on the brush and create those beautiful brush strokes. Everything there is just happening because of the brush. Just naturally occurs as you use those paints. And that is just looking so good to me. And you begin to see even the lines in the background from the wood pattern kind of coming through. And it just looked really neat to me. And in hindsight, I would probably go back and put some sort of lettering on this, put some sort of stamp, a, a faded stamp over that to make it look like a ledger behind this. But again, we're going to cover most of this up with the collage. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just uh, take a break here and jump to the next part. So we're going to set this aside and let it dry. 
And what I had was some little scraps of wood that I bought at Hobby Lobby, some tags, and was going to experiment with them. So since I had this paint left over and I'm in a decoupage crafting kind of mood, I actually wound up not using these. Uh, right now they're actually sitting off to the side waiting to be used. Uh, we'll go back and play with those at another time, and I'll make a video with that for you guys later if, uh, to show you that. These will be a little bit smaller, smaller decoupage projects. And I'm just doing the same technique. On this first one, we're just mixing the colors and the orange, the yellow, and a little bit of the black just to try and give it that kind of Halloween-y background. And we're going to go around the sides of it, and we're going to uh, just color that in so that as it's hanging from the front, you know, I hate looking at a block of wood and seeing the raw edges when you've painted the front or decorated. That's just me. You may like that. but uh, So we're doing that. Now we're just going with a little bit of that cross-hatching technique just to try and give it that distressed look. And once that one's done, we're going to set that aside and let it dry. And then we're going to grab another block of wood. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a little bit different, different technique on each one of these. Uh, with this one, um, I wanted to go a little bit darker, uh, a little bit more of a, of a fall, not a fall vibe, but a little bit more of a Halloween vibe. So I'm actually going to wind up using this one with a raven, one of the raven uh, pieces of ephemera. And I'll show you that again in a later project. So just color around the edges. Uh, and getting everything ready. Sorry, we're out of camera a little bit there. And uh, as you can see, this one much darker, going with a very different feel than the other one. The last one we're going to do, which we'll show you that in a minute, we're going to try and put a little texture on it. Uh, not sure I liked it when it was dried, but it was just something we were experimenting with. So we're doing this one. As you see, we're going back in and just adding that darker element to this one than it was to the other one. And then I'm just touching some of those, some of the the black paint there with the brush and then just kind of blurring it out. So you see the difference there in those two. And then on the last one that we did here, what I want to do again was, uh, we're going to lay that background down on it just like we did with the others. But what we're going to do here is we're going to, we're going to take the brush and the paint. I'm going to leave a heavy load of paint on the brush and I'm going to do some tapping. What I'm actually doing right now, I know it's high speed, um, but in slow speed, that was me trying to figure out which side of the tag I wanted to use. I was trying to decide, do I really like that back part of the tag? Do I want to hang it where you can see the twine? And in the end, it was all said and done. Um, I decided not to. We're going to just do it just like we did the others. So on this one, we're just going to go ahead and put a little yellow around the outside. Didn't want that dark part. So we're just trying to color that in and get around the twine. And now we're just going to go ahead and lay our base down. And once we get that base color laid down, uh, we're going to... Uh, and I, and, and I went back on this one because I, I just I had I just didn't like it. And since I went ahead and grabbed the extra paint, put a little more orange on it. So in this one, we're just going to lay down the two colors, the orange and the yellow. And once I get the base color down, I'm going to go with a heavy load of the paint. And that's you see me just tapping it on there, and it's creating ridges and colors. And I know this is high speed. I uh, probably should have slowed this down for you guys, but sorry about that. Um, and so when it dries, you'll see it'll have some texture to it. It'll have some raised points to it. And then once we're done with that, uh, with those tags, and we're done with the palette paper, we're just going to wad it up, throw it away, and we're done with that for now. So I went ahead and grabbed my splat box, because we have uh, one more wood tag. And what I wanted to do with this tag was I wanted to experiment with my spray stains, some of the Halloween stains. So we're going to lay down a coat of just white, a heavy coat of white acrylic paint on it, and let that serve as a resist and a background to keep the paints and the mica sprays from soaking into the wood. So we're just going to go ahead and paint a heavy coat of white on there, and then we're just going to let that sit, and we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to work with our new uh, mica spray stains. So just sorry we're out of camera there, but all we're doing is just lay down a heavy coat of white, set it in the box, let it dry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use some Distress Oxide sprays. We're going to use a little carved pumpkin, a little wilted violet. Actually, that's the wilted violet. And then there's the twisted citron. And then we're going to use a little carved pumpkin. Now you can see it's kind of beating up on the, on the, on the, on the uh, white background on the acrylic there. So, which is good. It's not soaking into the wood, but it's also not setting quite like I thought. This actually came out looking better than I expected. So I'm actually going to just kind of let the inks run over that painted background. And uh, it's, going to make some, it's going to make a little sludge, a little mess. I don't like it here. You know, it, 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 we're experimenting. You know, we're just doing it, letting it do its thing. So I went ahead and just dabbed off some of those runs. And it pulled that mud color out, but it left that beautiful beautiful oxide on top of that 
uh, just as I was hoping it would. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to grab our heat gun, and I'm just going to try and speed up the process a little bit. When it's all said and done, uh, I'm actually going to leave this. I'm not going to spray anything else on it. Once it dries, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm using the heat gun here, but what I'm actually going to wind up doing is just letting it dry the rest of the way on its own. I don't think I have that. went back and grabbed it to show you guys. It's also sitting off to the side to be used uh, at a later date, but when it dried, it just looked even better than I could have expected. And you'll notice kind of at the top there, it, it created almost like a scaling effect, uh, very unexpected scaling effect. And you do have some of those runs, the drips. I just, and I, I, I came out looking better than I thought. So it's one of those situations where you don't know until you try. So as Tim Holtz likes to say, just sit down and play. Just try. You know, you, you do you. Just uh, sit down and experiment and see what you get. And uh, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. And every now and then you get something that comes out really cool like this. So what I'm actually going to do is just grab a little bit of Mod Podge uh, spray, a little semi-gloss. going to give it a nice sheen. We're just going to spray over the top of that and we're just going to let it dry. Looks like a little so cloudy there. It does look a little cloudy there, but once it dries, that color comes right back through, uh, and you got a nice durable little piece of wood there. So that took care of that one. I'm just going to bring these other three back on screen so you can see them. Again, we didn't do anything with them in this video, uh, but you see the difference there. That one with the black, a little bit more of a Halloween look. This one with the texture, you can see the spot standing out from the brush strokes there. So those are the three panels. And you know, like I say, we'll, we'll do something with those, and we'll make a video of those later. In the meantime, we're going to grab our tray. We're going to go to work on our collage. Okay, so I lost part of the video apparently I'd recorded. So what we're working with here is the vellum pieces. We've got them laid out. And I actually did a part of the video where I kind of showed you how to mount vellum. And uh, don't know what happened to it. May have accidentally deleted it. One of the things you can do, though, I've got these little matchsticks. And if you lay the vellum onto it, you see what happens is the matchstick shows through the vellum. If you're going to raise the vellum up off of a platform like that, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need some kind of a frame because you're going to want to hide those, those whatever it is you're using to raise the vellum with, you want to hide it. So what I'm doing is I've got some, uh, I've got some of uh, Tim Holtz uh, dies, uh, and I forgot what they're called, and just, just checking to see the different size I want to use. I, I like that one. That's a little too big. It's, it's just not going to leave me any room to work with. So I wound up going with this die. And it's going to fit all four of those individuals there. And when I put a frame around it, it's going to allow me to mount them to the wood without being visible. Now, when it's all said and done, I actually didn't mount them to the inside of the frame. Um, so all I'm doing is measuring at this point to see what size piece of paper I need. Because I want the paper to be the size of the vellum. And then I'm going to center that frame to cut out uh, to cut out what I need to go around those pictures. Now, what I did was went into my paper stash and grabbed an all seasons paper pad, and I'm actually just looking for a pattern that I thought would look good. And I found this, which beautifully matches the color uh, on the background of the the wooden panel that we're actually working with. So we're going to wind up using that. So what we're going to do is, since we've measured the vellum, I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take my trimmer and I'm going to cut the uh, cut this paper pad down, and I'm going to cut four pieces out of it so that I can then run it through my die cutting machine to make those those frames and those extra pieces with. So a little bit of super high speed now because you don't need to see all this. Basically, we're going to cut it cut it in uh, again. We're going to cut our four squares out and just lay it down on the machine. And I'm looking over the pattern, trying to figure out what I want to keep. And I'm actually, the way I'm laying it out is because I know I'm cutting out the frame. I want to cut it out so that that large pattern piece is actually left over. That large decorative piece is what I actually have that, that pops out, because I can use that then in a layer on another project. And you'll see what I mean after I run it through, through the die machine. So we're going to do this four times. And we're just trimming it down. And I'm adjusting it and constantly shuffling it because, again, I'm trying to get it so that I'll have the piece. You're always thinking about the pieces that are going to be left over. Now, you're always thinking about what's going to be cut out, which you might potentially say no, most people would throw away, but you're actually not going to do it. You're going to keep it. So I'm going to lay my frame over that, and I'm going to put it where I want it. I'm going to run it through my machine. And now when we're done, and I've slowed this down, slow the video down so you can see, 
I've got that piece that pops out, and that's a decorative piece. I'm going to keep that. That's going to be used for something. That's a card front. That's anything. And there's my frame, which I'm going to put around my portrait pieces, which is going to allow me to mount them, put something behind them, and mount them so that you won't be able to see how they're actually mounted. Now, again, you'll see once we get into the project, we'll end up mounting them completely different. Uh, but that's the idea there. And we're going to do this three more times. So back to some super high speed here. You see we've got our frames cut out. We're laying them over each of our vellum pieces. And then you're just going to use whatever glue of choice you want to use. I actually tried a couple different things, wound up not liking them. You see how I put the matchstick behind it there? I know that was a little fast, but you can't see it now. Um, again, didn't matter anyways. Uh, used my tape runner, and it was a little wider than the paper, so we actually wound up using some glue. Just experiment with some different things. Uh, Whatever you want to use is fine, but that's what it's going to look like when you're done. And so we got that one done, and we're going to do with all four of these. In the end, I wound up going with a liquid glue because it gave me a little bit more control. Plus, it allowed me to glue all four sides down on the vellum. And uh, that nice clear glue won't leave any residue. It won't show through. It won't interfere with the frame and the lights when we put it in the background. It's afraid that anything else we use, any kind of other glue we might have used might have shown through. So just to make sure we're just using a good glue there. So we're getting all four of those pieces ready. And then once we get those ready, let them sit and they don't take long to dry. And this one we went back and we put a little glue in there because as we said we used the tape runner and I just didn't like the way it held it down. So we just lift that edge, put a little glue in there and glue it down and let that dry. And then once we get all those done we're gonna grab our we're gonna grab our piece and what I'm actually doing here is laying it out to see how I kind of want it to look. Uh, go ahead and pull that little white piece off of there. We're going to do something different with that. And each one of those characters, the theme behind this was supposed to be kind of a little drugstore type thing, a uh, little superstitious kind of, you know, are they good guys? Are they bad guys? Are they, you know, what, what are we, it's a Halloween-y, who are these, who are these pharmacists? So in the end, I'm going to pull that little piece off there and I'm going to use that. I want to use that as a focal point, as a centerpiece. So we're actually going to wind up putting that on Again, everything differently. You can see all the different labels for each one of those there. So what I did was I drilled a very tiny hole in the corner so that I could run my tiny lights through. And we're going to lay it out around the edges of the frame. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my vellum pieces. I'm going to lay them on there because I want to see how this is going to look. Again, we totally changed this when I started working with it. Uh, I made some other collage pieces like this and the wood frame was deeper uh, which I like that better you'll see why in a minute um, it's a little tricky sometimes the lights kind of show behind the vellum depending on how you do it so when I put it down the vellum right on top of it you can see those lights shine through so if I mount it too close but when I raise it up and put it on the edge it's not as it's not as obvious it's not as bright so what I'm actually going to wind up doing is layering it. Even when I tried to put it close to the edge, I didn't like it. So what I actually wound up doing was running the lights right around the edge of the inside of the wood. And then we're going to put our vellum uh, pieces on the outside of the frame so that it would be, the lights would be a little more diffused behind it. We'll show you the end pictures. At the end, you'll have a picture of what it looks like both turned on and turned off. Of course, you'll see that as we're working. But what I'm doing is just using some double-sided tape to hold it down. This good strong tape is going to hold my lights in place. And the reason I'm doing that is because I can pull out that other piece on the top and I can actually layer something over that that sticks out from behind. Didn't wind up doing a lot of that. A couple of times I, I peeled off a piece and the ones right in the middle there, they're out open and exposed. I wanted to cover those lights up. So you'll see as we go through the collage later, I actually use those pieces of double-sided foam tape to help hide some of the lights that were exposed from underneath the vellum. And look at that, just fit perfect. I mean, it just reached all the way around the frame beautifully. Now, when I pick him up and I put him over the edge like that, you see he looks a lot, the, the lights are a lot more diffused. And even though you can still see that one light, it's going to go away uh, because we're going to put the tag for who he is and what he does on the bottom. And so we actually wind up putting all four of them on the edges on the corner. And if you know any, if you've ever seen my collages before, I like to have them hang off the edge. You see the labels hanging off the edge there. I actually wound up not doing that on some of these, but we actually uh, 
what I like to do is I just, I like to, and we've slowed it down so you can kind of see here as we get into this process, and I'll speed it back up again in a minute. But what I like to do is I, I like to have my pieces, I like to have the piece kind of come alive, feel like it's standing out at you. But on this one, we actually wound up making the edges a little crisper. We centered the frames, we put the vellum pieces on there where we wanted them, we put the tags on the bottom and on the top, and we just, we just made it look uh, a little bit different. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, speed things up again and just kind of talk through the process as we begin putting the rest of these collage elements down. All right, so uh, as you can see, we speeded things up just a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm putting the uh, four vellum pieces in the corners, and I'm leaving a little room for their tags, the identi identity tags that are going to go beneath them. I wound up using the little tags, the one for the pharmacies and the, and the opticians. Uh, and so I'm just going to try and make it as if each one is part of either a separate pharmacy or a group of pharmacies. It's just a group of people. So the, the idea of this when I was making this was maybe something like would be on a display, uh, like something a traveling salesman would give out that you could display and say, hey, if you need medicine, go here or something, something kind of whimsical or weird like that. So what I do with a lot of my ephemera is I went ahead and I did distress the edges because I wanted to keep the Halloween vibe. I didn't want too much white in there, too much crispness in there. So we did a lot of, uh, did a lot of uh, just distressing around the edges uh, and even over the tops of some of them, uh, the different ones. And so just tried to, to make it fit. The little eye chart in the middle there took, took some while to figure out what I wanted to do with it. And in the end, I, I didn't want to put it on the edge. Um, I wanted it to kind of stand out a little bit and uh, just very quickly using a hot melt to put that in place, a hot glue to put that in place, that helps. Uh, it just holds it a little bit stronger when you're putting your tiny lights on the back. Just make sure you put your tiny lights on so that you can change the battery. Make sure that you check to see which way that tag flips open. Otherwise, it'll be a little awkward changing the battery. Uh, but uh, I wanted to, you'll see later on with the eye chart how we put that on. Right now, we're just, what I'm doing here is you can see I'm actually glued one piece to the lady at the top left corner, put the poison actually inside the frame over with a little foam tape over the wire. All I'm doing is covering the wires at this point, just putting pieces around the edges. I'm going to use that number 13 fit beautifully in between those two with a little foam tape and just lifted it up over the wires. The wires are behind it. Um, decided not to put the owl cigars. I just thought it was too much uh, and wound up instead just putting a couple of little pieces on the corner. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to use some of those white foam dots and those white foam dots uh, as we saw earlier will show through and I don't, I don't like to see how my vellum pieces are mounted and so I'm going to put those on there and then that gives me a space when I flip it over to throw those little white dots on there and you'll see that later. So now just distressing some more edges. This one I actually put across the top and then crinkled it and then distressed it again. It really gives it that nice kind of brown look, folded old paper look. So I'm just going through some pieces. Some of these I actually wound up not even using, but just getting them ready. Um, little detour here, working with one of those wooden plaques. Uh, I wanted to, I did actually show this, didn't, wasn't sure if I had it in the video, but I do. I just, this is just so neat. That raven is just, there's just something about that, that black against the orange and yellow and that bullseye. Uh, and I'm just trying to decide if I wanted to use a piece of strip of tape or whatever. And, and then when it's all said and done, we just stuck with the bullseye, put one of the little sentiments from the sentiment book on there um, and just kind of left it as is. just looks really cool to me. Just something about this, just a little whimsical piece. And once it, when this is done, I actually wound up, like I said, that's hanging on the door uh, to the room upstairs. Uh, you could put it on a little nail or anything like that or just kind of set it up against something. But didn't do a whole lot with this. Uh, just wanted to just something simple. And on this one, definitely you've got that beautiful uh, Halloween-y background, that fall background kind of standing out at you with the orange and the yellow there, almost like clouds if you can kind of see that. So just gluing it down. Just use whatever glue you want to use. Uh, I'm going to use a little foam tape here to lift up. And, and I'm sorry you couldn't see it there, but just a piece of a bigger square foam piece to in his body, and then I just let him sit on top of the the label there. All right, back to the eye chart. Uh, we're going to put our little foam pieces, little foam dots on the back. And I'm going to put them on the bottom, and I'm not worried about those on the bottom being covered up uh, because, uh, well, actually that piece right there you can see I just peeled off the sticky uh, off of that, and I use that to hold the bottom piece. We're actually going to cover that up, so you're not going to see that. Uh, started to put the house in there, but I didn't. I just felt it was too much vellum, so we just moved away from that and said, you know what, let's just start filling in this area with some of the ephemera, just to give it that kind of old, again, prescription drugstore type vibe. So I'm just grabbing different little things, even the florist tag there, 
Um, we're actually going to put a little cinnamon on it, just put a little sticker on it, uh, and just getting everything distressed and ready. When it comes to gluing these things down, um, now I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I use uh, Mod Podge. I like to use Mod Podge because it's cheap and it works. And you can put it on the back, you can put it on the front. It creates, serves as a resist. It does everything uh, that uh, other products would do that just cost a whole lot more money. If you're working with a smaller project and you want to work with some of the Ranger, uh, the Ranger glazes or different things, that's fine. If I'm doing a smaller piece and I have something specific for that. But as far as glue goes, uh, don't underestimate Mod Podge. So you see what I'm doing is I'm using the skinny labels here to uh, cover up that wire. When it's all said and done, I think there's one little piece of wire that wound up left being uncovered, but you really don't ever see it. Or I may, I can't remember if I covered it up or not, but uh, just put that right. I literally just put that right over the wire with a really thin piece, of, one of those little thin dots. And we're just putting some pieces in, just gluing them over each other, a little glue on the bottom, using regular old uh, white tacky glue there to get it down. If you want to, you can go over the top of this with the Mod Podge and kind of seal it. I actually didn't on this one. This one I'm using a lot of the, for the larger pieces, I'm using just that, that bottle glue there. But then it, it kind of gets a little sloppy, so at some point you'll see we, we switch to the Mod Podge. There's no rhyme or reason to this. You see there I've just put the label over that tag. There's no, there's no plan. I lay all these pieces out and I just grab a piece and I put it down there. And if I like the way it looks, great. If I don't like the way it looks, I, I use another piece. You see, I lit it up there just to kind of get an idea of where we're going. I like the way it looks so far. I love that dreadfully wicked tag at the top. I wish I'd have bought another, got another box, a package of those tags. Um, and I have to wait till next Halloween, I guess. And so here, just, uh, just again, just little foam dots, just little pieces, just trying to give some depth to it. The whole tray, actually, and you really can't see it in the pictures and in the video, but the whole tray, really, everything sits back in the tray. It's just the four vellum pieces that are lifted off the tray, so it really gives it a much thicker look uh, than it actually is. So you see here, uh, turn the lights on, and those little spots that are showing up on the video, they don't look that way in real life, so it just, just lets you know it actually it's much more subdued. I think that has something to do with the camera angle. But uh, it does not look like that. It's, it, you don't really see the lights. You just have that nice purple glow coming from behind those vellum scenes. Um, so don't worry about that. It, it looks a little different in the video. And if you're ever working with the tiny lights and the vellum and things like that, then, then by all means, you know, turn them on and off. See how it looks. And if you don't like the way it's looking, you know, do something different. You can even put another piece of vellum under that vellum over those tiny lights to try and help... Uh, to try and help diffuse the lights if you want to. So I grabbed a bunch of little pieces of ephemera and then wound it up not using them. That's what that was. Uh, and this was a little piece that I had made a while back. I'd put some distress uh, crackle on it, some crackle and glaze. You can't really see it. That piece, that little artist tab is crackled. That little red one is crackled. And these were some pieces I had from way before. They're not Halloween ephemera. They're just little pieces that I just thought would look good to give a little texture and a little different look to the, to the piece. So again, when you're working with a collage, and if, if you saw Tim Holtz's video last year when he did the Christmas one, which was great with the little squares and the different things, I did feel like he was, I, 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 he says, don't freak your freak. I did. I feel like there was a lot of pieces getting cut off and thrown away or, or not being used right. And so I don't like to cut up those larger pieces. That does bother me. So if, you, and you'll know the first time you do it, you'll be like, oh, I've ruined it. I don't want, just don't do, if you do, you, as Tim says, you do you. And for me, I definitely use the bigger pieces. So you see we're just gluing these little pieces around now, just little tiny pieces around the wood frame, little filling in some gaps, trying to let that orange show through, but at the same time not too much of it, trying to give it that, uh, still keep that collage look going, if you will. Uh, tiny tweezers, by the way, are your friend. Uh, you will love those things when you're working with collages or anything like this. So, all right, so got everything pretty much done. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take, uh, well, there's the Mod Podge, you can see, and we're just uh, some smaller pieces and just putting them in, just putting them wherever I, you know, little real tiny pieces and just, just tapping, just tap and go. I did that because it was easier than grabbing the bottle and squeezing on all these little tiny pieces. Just hit it with the paintbrush and then just put it where I want it. Um, and I actually didn't go over the edge of this uh, with the Mod Podge. And you can see there I put it on the wood, little pieces on the wood, in the corners, just tucking in those little pieces to make them, to, to make it look good. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to take my, uh, we're going to take our, 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 uh, our little uh, craft tool in a minute, and I'm going to use that to kind of fold up those edges. Once everything is good and dry, 
I'm going to take some of those pieces that aren't glued down all the way and I'm actually going to lift up the edges and put a little curl to them, if you will. Um, so what I've done here is uh, we've slowed things down so you can kind of see this process. You see, I'm using my tweezers and I, and, and I wanted you to see this. I'm just lifting, just using my finger and just giving it a little distress. It's going to help that piece. You see, you just, just work it and then it stands up and then you just kind of push it back down. And it looks like it's coming apart, but it's, it's really not. Uh, and, and I like to do that. That's something I like to do with my collages. Again, I like for them, I don't like a flat collage. I like depth. I like to go off the edges. I like to go outside of the border. If I'm working with a square piece, you know, there's pieces that stick off the edge. If I'm working with a heart, it probably won't look like a heart by the time I'm done because I'll have pieces sticking off of the edges and it'll it'll look somewhat different. But this depends on the board, the, the background you're using, what, what type of wood you're using. If you're using a recessed frame like this or if you're using a, a regular board. So as you can see there, got those pieces done. Kind of like the way it looks. And what we're going to do is just... Um, we're going to go ahead and get it ready and turn the lights on. I'm actually going to turn the lights off so you can see what it looks like in the dark. Uh, but that's pretty much a done piece right there. I'm just looking at it, trying to decide. You see, I've got the brush there. Do I want to glue over anything? No, I don't. I'm looking at the finished work. I'm, I'm looking at it, and I'm just trying to decide. And, and you'll do that. You'll know when you're done. Uh, it's your project. So hopefully this is giving you guys some ideas. You know, uh, Hopefully not too boring, um, not too fast or too slow in places. But just uh, just have fun. When you see these 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 makers and the things they make, number one, it, they didn't make it overnight. They 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 didn't make it in an hour. They they took their time, and they may or may not have really had a plan. So here we go, the finished project. Um, there it is. Sorry, it's not fully in frame. There you go, a little better for you there. But you see the lights, and again, they don't look that way in person. Those little that little halo around those lights is not there. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to go and turn off the lights so that you can see how this looks uh, in the dark. And again, um, so there it is. The lights are off. Not much to it. Actually, it looks kind of cool and haunting there in my craft room. And then when we flip the switch, beautiful. I love the way that came out. A little more symmetrical than I usually do with the four corners there, but I just love the way this came out. So guys, as always, I hope you have fun. Remember, uh, the, the ability to create is a gift from God. I hope that you enjoy what you're doing. And just as always, remember uh, to have fun whatever you do in life. So this is the Krabby Crafter here, Pastor Ian, saying happy Krabby Crafting. And we will see you next time.